Okay, we're going to review how to do standard deviation both by hand and on the calculator. Uh, we use a data set that's familiar to us. We've used it a couple times in class. So uh, you should uh, remember this. All right, we're going to start off with our data set. We're only using five terms. All right, we're going to create a table. X is going to represent each item in our data. We're just going to, we're going to go ahead and put them in order uh, for our by hand process. So 51 comes first. 55, 61, 88, and 95. Our second column is going to represent our mean. Now, if we were going to calculate this by hand, we would add these up, and we would find that our sum would be 350, and there are five terms in the set, so our mean is actually 70. All right. Now the next column we want to talk about is where we find our differences. Remember, standard deviation is a function of distance. It's the average distance our data set is away from our mean. So we have to find those differences first. We're going to subtract our mean from our data set. So 70 from 51 is going to give us a negative 19. 55 minus 70 is negative 15. 61 minus 70 is negative 9, 88 minus 70 is 18, and 95 minus 70 is 25. Now, when we did mean absolute deviation, what we did was we took the absolute value. Instead, we're going to square these. So we're taking the same value and we're going to square them. That's going to give us a positive value. Now I've already done the work on this, so negative 19 squared is actually 361, 15 squared is 225, 9 squared of course is 81, 18 squared is 324, and 25 squared is 625. Now, <clears throat> just like when we did mean absolute deviation, what we need to do is take the average of these. So we need to add them all up, which I've already done, and we get 1,616. Now we're going to divide that again by 5, which is going to give us 323.2. Now this is the average of this column. All right? But we're not done yet. This is in our standard deviation. We have one more step. Our standard deviation, which is represented by sigma, is the square root of this number. So it's the square root of 323.2. And we're going to get approximately, you see this notation, that means it's approximate. It's not exact. It's going to be approximately 17.98. So that's a lot of calculations that we went through just, just to find our standard deviation, right? Well, there's another way to do it. And we've talked about this in class. We're going to use our calculator. The calculator we use is this. It's the uh, TI30X2S. And it will do a lot of this work for us. In fact, all we have to do is start with our data set. And I'm going to leave it like this so that we have this information. First thing you want to do with your calculator is you want to clear the memory. You do that by holding the on button right down here and hit clear. And it will say memory cleared. Now you're going to hit the second button and then hit data. It will take you to this screen. It will say one var, which is underlined. You will hit enter. And it will take you back out to the main screen. Hit data again, and you will see a prompt that says X1. Now here, it doesn't matter if they are in order or not. Okay, we put them in order to do them by hand. But we can use our data set just as it's given to us. Because the calculator doesn't care. So, I will do it just as our data set is given to us. All right? We're going to type in 55 and hit the down arrow. 
and it'll take us to something that says FRQ. It stands for frequency. Since we only have one of those, we'll keep it at one. X2 will be 51. Have one of those as well. X3 is 95. We only have one. 61 is the next one. And 88 is the last one. Now, once we hit X6, we don't have an X6. So we're done. Now we want to see the calculations. You hit this button right here. It says stat bar. So you hit that button, and it gives us all of our calculations. You see N is underlined first. That's the number of terms in our set. Scroll over one. That's our mean, which is 70, which we found before. Two more is sigma x. That's our standard deviation. Now you'll notice there's a lot of decimals. That's why we did approximately 17.98 before. And as you can see, if we round it up to the second decimal place, that's what we get again. Okay, so I know it's not a perfect demonstration because of our technology, but hopefully that helps you. Make sure you know that process. You can use the calculator on your EOCT and on tests in class. Uh, you can also do it by hand if you want to, but it's a lot more work. Okay, hope that helps. If you have any questions, ask me.